Would you like to know how to make this DIY book press? You would? Cool beans, let's go. So the first thing you're gonna need are some super cool dance moves and some safety gear. The second is a piece of laminated pine shelving around 12 inches wide. You don't necessarily need a miter saw, but it sure does help. Measure and mark your board how wide you'd like your book press to be. I cut mine around the same length as the shelf was wide. Did you cut the board? Cool! Now cut three more the same length. Now take the cut boards to your dungeon of a basement and dust the boards off with a lint-free cloth. Next, we are going to laminate the boards together to make two thicker boards. So once you have your boards cleaned of sawdust, protect your workspace, grab some wood glue, and spread the glue all over one side of two of the boards. Or one board if you're like me and you still haven't bought yourself more clamps. Anyway, once you have the board coated with glue, place another board on top and awkwardly clamp them together. Oh, and make sure the boards are lined up on all four sides. Mmm, goopy. Intermission! Okay, break time's over. Get back to work. Oh. The glue is dried and now we have a bunch of dried glue drips and a slight unevenness on the sides which means it's sanding time. I'm using the belt sander to even up the edges. If you don't have a belt sander, I can't help you. Just kidding, use another power sander. You don't have one of those? Well, say goodbye to your arms and your soul as you sand that puppy down by hand. Alternatively, you could use a hand planer to clean up the edges. Next comes awkwardly sanding in front of the camera in your jammies because you refuse to change. I'm just using my little mouse sander and I started with around 120 grit and went up to 220 grit. I also sanded the sides and rounded the edges. Guess what? It's drilling time. I marked where I wanted the holes to be and measured one and a half inches from each corner and then found those intersecting points on the board. Then, with a block underneath, I grabbed the largest bit I owned, which was not large enough, and attempted to drill through two layers of pine. When that failed, I found some wood boring bits that I inherited from my grandfather's and used them instead. My drill is not the most powerful tool in the shed, so this step was slow going for me. When I was drilling the holes in the board I knew would be on the bottom of the book press, I drilled part way with the boring bits and the other half with my largest drill bit. This was to ensure a snug fit for the carriage bolts on the bottom because the boring bit holes were a bit larger. Those holes were fine for the top board because it needed to slide easily on the bolts. I filled any spots around the holes where the wood split with wood filler and sanded those areas once the filler dried. The final step before assembly is to coat the boards in lacquer or polyurethane if you prefer. I never used lacquer before and so I was a bit nervous. You'll need a good brush and a little bit of patience for this and an open window and a fan. This stuff is strong. I applied one coat, then once the first coat dried, I sanded down any ridges before applying a second coat. The instructions said to apply three coats, but I was happy with two. And I ran out of time. Once the lacquer dried, it was time to put it all together. The only other thing I needed to do was to hammer the carriage bolts into the bottom board. Those holes were a little bit snug. Then slide the other board on top, and spin on some wing nuts. I also bought some pins that fit around the bolts to keep the top board elevated while I place the book on the press. And there you have it, one DIY book press with laminated boards. The only thing I would change about this is make another one and make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> Whoops. If you enjoyed this project or were at least entertained, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more Total Panarchy, the craft channel with a little anarchy. Until next time, I'm going to go cry in the corner because I made the bloody thing too small. <laughs>